Welcome to the third video in our chest x-ray interpretation series. We've gone through chest x-ray anatomy basics in part one and gone through a systematic approach to chest x-ray interpretation in part two. Now it's time for you to have a go at interpreting some x-rays yourself using the knowledge from the earlier videos. At each stage I'll let you know when to pause the video. At this point you can take a minute to assess and interpret the radiograph and write down your own findings. You can then unpause the video to go through the answers. I'll provide a bit of background about the patient during the answers. The key objective here is to see what information can be gleaned with little or no knowledge of the presenting complaint or history. So let's start with case one. Pause the video now. What's immediately obvious is that there is an abnormality in the right lung field. Let's move on to our systematic approach to determine what the cause is. The airway is deviated towards the side of the abnormality. The lung fields are asymmetrical, with a size reduction in the right lung compared to the left. In addition, there is a triangular opacity in the right lower lung with absent lung markings. The outline of the right hemidiaphragm is completely obliterated, and the right heart border and mediastinum are shifted towards the right. In conclusion, piecing all the information we have together, the silhouette sign of the right hemidiaphragm suggesting a right lower lobe problem, the asymmetry of the lung fields and deviation of both trachea and mediastinal structures is consistent with a reduction in right lung volume. In addition, the opacification and absent lung markings suggest a diagnosis of right lower lobe collapse. In this case, primary bronchogenic carcinoma is the diagnosis which needs to be excluded. A brief comment on the technical quality. Is this film well centred and how do we assess this? Yes, the film is well centred. Look at the spinous processes. They should be equidistant from the medial ends of the clavicles and the anterior ends of the ribs. Case 2. Pause the video now. What is the key finding? There's a large left pneumothorax with near complete collapse of the left lung. In this case, there is no obvious shift in airway or mediastinal structures, but on closer inspection of the lung fields, there is a significant lack of lung markings in the left hemithorax, consistent with a large pneumothorax and collapse of the left lung. There is no evidence of tension in this spontaneous pneumothorax. Management in this case would involve resuscitation followed by insertion of an intercostal chest strain and then re-imaging to assess the resolution of the pneumothorax. Case 3. Pause the video now. In this radiograph we can see a single lead permanent pacemaker in situ on the left. The heart is enlarged and there is a marked prominence of the interstitial lines and minimal blunting of the left costophrenic angle. The most likely diagnosis in this case is interstitial pulmonary edema. Now you may be wondering what these thin central interstitial lines, a few centimetres long, extending away from the hyla, are known as. Bear in mind, these don't represent vessels. They're known as curly A lines. Now peripherally, the two to three centimetre lines are known as curly B lines. This is when they're seen abutting the pleura laterally. On a lateral chest x-ray, these same lines are seen in the retrosternal space and they're known as curly D lines. So what are curly C lines? Well, these are the same processes as curly A, B and D lines, but they don't reach the pleura. All of these lines are all seen in this radiograph, A, B and C, and they all represent essentially the same thing, expansion of the interstitial space by fluid. Now how do we confirm that these findings we see in this radiograph are indeed due to an acute process rather than a chronic interstitial disease? If we look at a previous chest x-ray, such as this, or if we repeat the film after diuresing the patient, will note that there is a subtle change in appearance. This film you're seeing now and the previous 
demonstrate the classic appearances of acute interstitial edema and show you how quickly this condition can indeed develop. Case 4. Pause the video now. Now, this patient presented with acute onset shortness of breath. The frontal chest radiograph is the key to diagnosis of acute pulmonary edema. It shows evidence of both interstitial and alveolar edema. Alveolar edema manifests as poorly defined nodular opacities that tend to aggregate, whereas interstitial edema, as in the previous case, can be seen as these peripheral septal lines. In this case, we can see these curly B lines. Case 5. Pause the video now. This patient is a young man who presented with a short history of chest pain, breathlessness and a productive cough. His background included chronic smoking and a history of IV drug abuse. Now the main abnormality we can see is some consolidating features in the right upper zone with cavitating features and a gas fluid level. There are no abnormalities in the left lung and the cardiac silhouette is normal. Now what would you include in your differential? Clearly an infective process could lead to this picture with an abscess formation in the chest. Other differentials which you need to think about probably include tuberculosis or a lung mass. In terms of other abnormalities on this chest film, if we look in the right upper zone we can see a healed right clavicle fracture. Now this emphasizes the importance of looking at the entirety of the film and not ignoring any areas in particular. Now there are quite a few organisms that we should consider if we're suspecting a lung abscess. These include Staphylococcus aureus, Klebsiella, Pseudomonas and Proteus. All these bugs are prone to lead to cavitation and abscess formation. Now, this patient ended up receiving a prolonged course of antibiotics for this abscess. As we can see in this follow-up chest x-ray, there is a reduction in the fluid component, but still seems to be some residual consolidation in the right lung. There is a small volume of pleural fluid in the right upper and mid zones. And in particular, this patient would be at risk of developing an empyema, a bronchopleural fistula, or even hemorrhage. And the case is of lung abscesses are associated with a high mortality and all these patients should receive expert respiratory care and prolonged course of antibiotics. What's also important is to identify and isolate an infective source. This includes investigation with blood cultures, sputum cultures, bronchoalveolar lavage, washouts and cytology, TB testing, HIV testing and a cardiac echo. Case 6. Pause the video now. So, first thing to note is on the top right says mobile AP erect. So clearly this was a portable chest x-ray done in an urgent or possibly even emergency setting. The patient is clearly unwell, which is not an entirely a nice film that has a good technical quality. We can see evidence of invasive ventilation, non-invasive and invasive monitoring, and invasive access as well. This patient, coincidentally, was admitted to ITU with septic shock and progressive respiratory failure requiring ventilation. And we can see here these multifocal bilateral airspace opacities that are distributed in a perihyla lower zone distribution. This is characteristic of ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, in the appropriate clinical context. 
Differentials that you need to think about include infection, which can be a complication of ARDS, and cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Often, differentiating between these causes can be impossible in some cases. There are multiple causes of ARDS, including trauma, sepsis, burns, pancreatitis. Mortality is incredibly high, around 50%. And often survivors develop a degree of chronic lung disease because the healing of the lung occurs by fibrosis. Case 7. Pause the video now. So the main abnormality in this film is a mass lesion in the left upper lobe. Specific imaging characteristics that help to narrow our differential down include evidence of cavitation and an air fluid level. We'll come to talk about this. There's an irregular opacity that has a central air density. And there's a horizontal inferior margin consistent with an air fluid level, indicative of cavitation. Now again, the differential diagnosis for a cavitating pulmonary mass lesion is wide. It includes, but is not limited to, malignancy, primary or secondary, infection, such as an abscess or tuberculosis. Inflammatory causes include vagueness granulomatosis and rheumatoid. Vascular causes include infarction. Other rarer causes include trauma and congenital causes. In terms of investigation, a CT would be appropriate and a referral to the lung cancer MDT. Bronchoscopy may be able to reach and biopsy this lesion. However, if it's peripheral in nature, then maybe an ultrasound and virtual bronchoscopy, or even a CT guided biopsy may be more appropriate. Now, this was an elderly gentleman with weight loss, so with a solitary lesion in an older patient and weight loss, malignancy would need to be at the top of the list. Case 8. Pause the video now. Now, this chest radiograph demonstrates marked hyperinflation of both lungs. We can see over 11 posterior ribs, and the diaphragms are flattened, and there is an enlargement of the retrosternal airspace, and some prominence of the pulmonary arteries. The most likely diagnosis is emphysema, most likely centrilobular due to smoking. It's important to note there are various types of emphysema. Centrilobular, which is the most common type, panlobular, paraseptal and parasecatricial emphysema. Now, what do you think the prominence of the pulmonary arteries has to do with anything? Well, it suggests a degree of pulmonary arterial hypertension. So in this case, in summary, we can say that there's unequivocal evidence of marked hyperinflation secondary to emphysema. That brings us to the end of the chest x-ray quiz. We hope the cases were thought-provoking and you were able to apply the knowledge from the previous videos to this. If you like this video and would like to see more similar videos or have any suggestions, please comment below.